Welcome back. Now it is time for the interview segment. As we know, today is Monday where we get to talk about political um, you know, issues and we talk about things that are basically going around in the political scene in Nigeria. Uh, over the years, um, Nigeria has recorded several accidental strikes by the Nigerian Air Force, killing innocent citizens across the country. Um, investigations reveal that over 425 persons, including children and women, had been killed by the military accidental, you know, bombings between September 2017 and 2023. That's, you know, a space of five years. And then moving on, this um, mistake had increased in the last two years, um, adding that no compensation had been received by the victim's family and neither has there been any acknowledgement or, you know, basically little or no acknowledgement from um, the military and the Nigeria Air Force. Uh, we see that, you know, in Ninja, Yobe, Zafarabono, Nasarawa, Kaduna and Kasina are the worst hit states, you know, that has been affected when it comes to these accidental bombings in Nigeria. Uh, recently, we had, um, you know, the news where there was an accidental bombing in the Tudumbiri Igabi local government area of Kaduna, which has claimed the life of over 85 persons, including women and children. This is a sad one, and you know, it has been going round on the on the on the news lately. Everybody has been talking about it, you know, since last week. You know, demanding for investigations to know what exactly is the matter, what went wrong, who was the one, who, who, who put out this order. You know, basically, there's been so many um, talks and situations around this um, this sad event. And today we'll be talking about it. We're talking about Kaduna bombing and also Nigerian struggles on effective security measures um, when it comes to you know dealing with security in the country and we'll not be doing it alone we'll be doing it with um honorable for be online and what you it's yeah it's a public affairs analyst and we're making doing justice to the discussion of today you're welcome sir thank you thank you uh, so much me. for joining us uh yes how are you doing today before we start you know before we go into the main topic of the day how are you doing today I'm doing pretty good, as you can see. Yeah, and I hope you're doing good too. I am. Thank you. Thank you. We are doing well. Also, let's go straight into the topic of today. We want to discuss cardinal bombing. Uh, we've heard that it has claimed the life of over 85 persons, including women and children. So how would you describe this um, this sad event? How would you describe the situation at hand? It, it happened on the 5th of December and then there's been so many um, takes on it, so many verdicts and, you know, basically different people are coming to give their opinions on it. So in your own case, what's your opinion on, on this sad event that has occurred? The incidents of the killings of uh, innocent uh, lives uh, that includes children, women, and uh, uh, people who are celebrating the, uh, the birth of uh, Muhammad uh, is quite unfortunate and pathetic. And um, mm -hmm. as a nation, I think uh, we've had enough of this. You know, this is not the first time just like you earlier gave to the background information, we've had series of deaths within uh, some years now as a result of accidental discharge by security agencies and the uh, dropping of bomb blasts by our military in their pursuit war against uh, terrorists. You see, I really go deep into this issue because there is so many gray area that is uh, left that is yet understood by many Nigerians. Mm -hmm. It is quite particular that um, how would innocent citizens that gathered within, not even inside the forest, within the, the community. Mm -hmm. And then we are hearing the incident of uh, bomb blast that uh, the government thought the military thought they are you know that they are terrorists or or uh insurgent group it's, it is quite unprofessional and it's not acceptable and this will continue if you know because of uh, how the how the professional security agencies operate in this part of the world, there are so many things that go on that we don't get to know how it ends. We have this oath of secrecy. We may not know that who order dates and uh, who carry out that act, but the military must take responsibility 
the, uh, the Air Force must put responsibility as well as the of the public computer has to adopt that incident as their own act. And then they must be transparent to and the President Ajumadubola Bejulubu. I think on Tuesday, uh, his return to the country, he issued out uh, a statement and he set up a committee of inquiries and he promised that they need to bring this uh, uh, investigation into a logical conclusion. Let's see what happens after. Otherwise, this is a usual thing we see in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. Every time this incident of this nature occurred, you will hear the president will say that we are doing something and then we want it. to mm. assure the Nigerians that uh, the perpetrators will be brought to book and that will end on paper, on, on paper, it will end on television. This time around, I want our leadership of this country, the leadership of the military to, to, to take responsibility and to be responsible for what? To the Nigerian people. Whoever who ordered that, whoever who has been responsible for this incident of the killings of innocent Nigerians should be brought to book to the notice of Nigeria. And that is the only way Nigerians can have peace. And even the soul of those who are who were killed in this incident will rest in peace. Otherwise, there is no way these people's souls will rest in peace. The only way they can rest in peace is for the perpetrators to be brought to book and justice to be served. Mm -hmm. I, I really hope that you know that will be done in due time. And then speaking on investigations, you know, by the, the, the president has called and said, okay, there should be proper investigation, thorough inv investigations carried out to make sure that you know the people who are responsible for this um, attack will be brought to book. Now, do you think that it's the right thing to do is um, the military investigating themselves? Now we see that the military are the ones who you know who all that is out the, the, the you know the dropping of the bombs and all of that. And now we see that the same military. The chief of administrative staff has come out to say that um, they will be carrying out a thorough investigation. Should that be the right thing to do? Shouldn't there be an independent organization or maybe something else that should be done, not the military investigating themselves? Uh, you need to understand then uh, and appreciate that um, the military is a whole and a very wide institution that comprises even, uh, you know, the Ministry of Defense. Is part of the military. the military. Chief of defense is part of the military. And most of them, they are civilian. So the only thing is that the military is a very wide institution and they even have their own police. They have their own courts. And uh, I want to believe that if only they are willing to do the right thing within the military, with what we have on ground, I am very sure and certain that the perpetrators will, be, will definitely be brought to book. There is nothing wrong asking the military to set up the inquiries because they have different departments and they have different kinds of people, even include inclusion of the civilian body that work with the military in terms of relating with the civilian society. So I'm very sure that only if there is sincerity, and that is where we can have a uh, resort that we are looking for. But if it is about the authenticity, talking about the confidence of the military in investigating this, uh, this case, I am very sure the military can actually do that and bring the perpetrator into because the military is a whole lot of institution that comes together. It's not just those who shoot. You know, they have the medical department, they have the people, the disciplinary department, they have the inter-community relation department and all that. So I'm very sure if only there is sincerity in the in the military in bringing this case to. To, to, to this investigation into a logical conclusion, I'm very confident in the military that they can at least, uh, they can actually do that. And especially when the president of the country is interested in ensuring that the military do the right thing in bringing the perpetrator to justice. Because until somebody is take responsibility for this mess, until that person is being punished, we we'll have a recurrence of this kind of situation because this is not the first time that we're having this happens in almost every security agency, the police, and that series of accidental discharge, uh, of accidental discharge of uh, bullets running into innocent lives and killing a lot of people. And at the end of the day, we don't get to 
receive justice. But I want to believe this time around, the military will actually show some level of responsibility to the people and to Mr. President and bring this perpetrator to justice. I have a little bit, I have, a I have confidence in them. Mm. Okay. Mm. This is this is really the first time that I'm hearing uh, somebody has come out to say uh, they actually have uh, you know the confidence in the military given all that has happened you know basically over um, over the years. Now we also see that uh, the, the the Muslim community, the Arab community has come out to say oh then they want the chief of army staff, the general in charge of division one um, to resign you know to be basically suspended and in fact just removed from the military um, force. Don't you think that is an extreme measure when it comes you know you know in in um, meeting our discipline it is you know there is a proverb in my hometown that cutting off the head you understand is not the remedy to headache there are better ways to resolve issues and uh, you if you based on the reports the chief of army staff the chief of defense staff and the naval staff they are not on the war fronts they aren't the one who ordered they are not there the only time that we can take can ask for the removal of the heads of the security chiefs is only when the investigation have been carried out and perpetrators have been found and the and the head of this head, the, the head of the military or the head of the Nava is trying to shield the person from going through the right punishment. That's so how we can say this. When the chief of air staff, chief of army staff, not actually Protect. I don't think there is any reason for us to call. So I want to join, I want to believe that it is extreme, uh, calling for the removal of sack of security ships because of what happened is, for me, is that it's, it's very, very extreme decision to take. But that's not to say that we should not sympathize. The love of any life of a Nigerian is a really an heartbroken situation to many of us. Since the incident happened, I've had a series of interviews with different uh, stations. I've had a lot of interaction with a lot of people concerns Nigeria, and a lot of people are asking questions, asking for my opinion, and I've never been at peace. I am not at peace with this situation mm -hmm. because it can happen anywhere. This time is Cardinal, God forbid, it might be in other zones. Other it might be in other zones. And that is why we should take this with every seriousness to see that this case is brought to a logical conclusion. Mm, thank you so much for that. Um, I have a question for you. you know, given that this is a democratic government, considering the welfare of the citizens, has the government been too complacent about the safety of Nigerians? And also, what are the assurances that even after disciplinary actions are taken, things like this will not occur in the near future? Uh, please, uh, can you take that question again? I said, given that this is a democratic government, considering the welfare of the citizens, has the government been too complacent about the safety of Nigerians? And what's the assurance that even after disciplinary actions are given, this occurrence will not take place in the nearest future? Um, this is really interesting. Uh, I don't think uh, it is fair uh, because, you know, when we say governments, there is always uh, transition and reforms. This is a new government. And uh, so far, so good. This government have started their own governance in a good pedestal. Oh, but uh, honorable, on that, do you think that... Um when it comes to the security aspect of you know dealing with situations in the country do you think that has been actually looked into we know that you know there's been so many talks on the economy so many actions that have been carried out when it comes to the economy of the country but then when it comes to security we've really not heard so much about what has been going on in the country you know it's it's, it's more like a dead zone compared to the previous administration where they have where we had you know more talks on security and how you know did they had talks to end them you know corruption in the country Okay, uh, before we talk about corruption, let me quickly say this. You know, you will appreciate that in the last few years and months, uh, the uh, events of, there have been reduction in the report of events of killings 
of innocent Nigerians, kidnappings, and the rest of them, of, and the rest of that. Uh, before the transition, this act actually dwindled. So because we've not been hearing on the television that this community was attacked, that uh, these people were attacked, and uh, that person was kidnapped, that uh, there was uh, violence there and there. People may not understand what the military are actually doing. We need to really appreciate the Nigerian government. And that's uh, the budget. I think this uh, we can appreciate that for the first time, we are now seeing the effect of the high budgeting on security architecture, just like we also have in the 2024 budget. There have been Nigerian government in the last four or five years have invested huge sum of dollars, huge sum of amount of money in fighting terrorism, criminality, and insecurity. And to some extent, to some extent, you will agree with me that you've not been reporting some of those cases of killings, kidnappings, and all that, if not for this lousy mistake that was carried out some weeks ago by our military that brought out the issue of insecurity again. In the recent time, I think in this part of the world, we've been experiencing, even if it is not what we actually expected, a whole total peace. At least we are experiencing appreciable amount of peace. And that is because some people somewhere are taking responsibility to prosecute the war against insurgency, Boko Haram, and insecurity in Nigeria. I will say that there is a democratic government that were newly, you know, is not even up to one year in the office. And then they could actually build on what the previous government did as far as security. And um, even this government uh, are yet to start operating with their own budget. They are only working on what the previous government left behind. So I want to believe that uh, this government is, with the strong statements that we have had, and with some of the body language of Mr. President, I think this government is really interested in fighting against corruption. Look at what happened to uh, the former CBN governor. Today, he's in Kujé prison. Look at the former chairman of EFCC. He has been removed. And all this, we need to appreciate this present government. It seems with the way this government is going, is not interested in corruption and is not ready to condone any act of what? Of uh, indiscipline among officials including his ministers. The president, on most occasions, have issued to all his ministers during fact meeting and next meeting, he gave them marching order, marching order, and he gave them serious warning on how they should carry out their act responsibility with him to, edge, to, to deliver the dividend of democracy in the coming year. So with what he has said, and with some of the things he has done, I'm talking about the the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I want to believe that this government is beginning to start well. I just hope they can maintain this momentum and keep it, sustain it to a logical conclusion. That's right now, I'm not giving a pass mark, but with what I have seen, I think they are going to impress Nigeria. Mm, okay, thank you so much for that, um, Honorable. Uh, I would want to, you know, totally agree with you on that. But then you, you mentioned something about us not reporting some of the, you know, the, the stories because we do not have any stories on insecurity. But then um, thinking about it and basically just um, shaking up my memory, I remember that it's been three months now that um, some graduates who were on their way to NYC camp, you know, in Akwa Ibom have been abducted for three months and they've not been released. You know, it happened in this administration and of course it's been three months now. Nothing has been said, you know, about that case. And the parents came out last week to actually beg the government to say, oh, help us interfere in this, you know, we've not seen our children for three months. We don't know what's happening to them, what's happening to their health, what's, you know, basically going on with them. You know, there's a fear, fear of, oh, are they, have, have they killed them? Are they still alive? And all of that. And, you know, they're coming out to literally beg the government to say, oh, help us, you know, help us do this, help us do that. And also last week, um, last week Friday, students of uh, the, the Lafayette University also have been abducted, you know, they went to a, a particular um, 
plays in the university and then they, they basically just abducted 17 students from you know this place these are the story we, we, we see stories like this and then it's that's why it brought me to the question of oh do we really think that the government had, is doing something about this is there is there is there is there is there are, are there security measures that has been passed across you know okay so that people can know not just not just um, the media or but then also the citizens know that okay this government is actually doing something right and they are basically putting more efforts when it comes to security because at the end of the day this is the festive period everybody is scared to travel we've gone out to the streets to hack people we know that this is the point where many people travel home for the festive um, season but no people, nobody is traveling because there's a fear of oh i don't want to be kidnapped on the road i don't want to be used as you know a ransom situation and you know, basically try to get money from my family members because the money is not even you know is not even even present so mm -hmm. I, I i want to ask now is there a correlation be between the economic situation of the country um, and also the insecurity that we are facing it might not be so loud um, i would want to agree to that okay maybe compared to the previous administration and now it's not it's the, the gap is still there we still see that there is in, in the present administration that's that fairness is, is still there but then is there a correlation between the economic situation of the country and of course the secure insecurity that we are facing right now uh economic hardship has been one of the reasons for increase in crime and criminality in any given society. And uh, I want to say that that is why we need to appreciate this. Uh, we need to appreciate the good people of Nigeria. We need to appreciate the people who are going through a lot of tough economic situation and still not resolved in criminality and crimes everywhere in the world every part of the world where there is widespread hunger where there is strong hardship when there is hardship as a result of economy reality there is usually crime so but i want to tell you something in 2012 2011 during the era of former president good luck a billy jonathan our economy is not as this terrible. The economy of Nigeria at that time is not as this rough. But yet, the level of criminality that was being perpetrated as at this time is something that is totally unspeakable or unthinkable compared to what we're having now. So there is no way. You know, Nigeria is a very complex country. Uh, Why you are trying to solve a problem here, some people somewhere they are planning to create another problem and don't forget that some of these crimes that we have in nigeria they are not completely as a result of hunger because they are well organized some people who are interested in jeopardizing the effort of government or estimates plan and sponsor some of these things to disorganize the government and that is why at this point i want to appreciate all the well-meaning nigerians all the good people of Nigeria who are cooperating with this government because they feel like this government has promised renewed hope and is going to lead to that. They have been showing cooperation. So I want to appreciate all Nigerians and I mm. say kudos to all young people who are going through one economic reality, although because they all understand, understood that it's not just a Nigerian thing. Mm. Economic action is a worldwide thing mm. everywhere in the world. Go to America, go to Mexico, go to Singapore, go to India, go to some other, go to Ghana, go to some other African countries, you will appreciate Nigeria. Just that most Nigerians will not appreciate what they have until when they travel outside the country. You see, they say a cow does not know the value of its tail until it is cut off. I have situations, stories of people who sold their properties, left Nigeria to the, to the other part of the world in search of greener pasture, in, in search of, green, uh, of better life, and were disappointed at the end of the day. To some extent, I know it is not easy, we all are facing it, but we still need to appreciate that Nigeria is actually improving, things are getting better. I see a lot, I read a lot of news, I've been to a lot of places, and I can tell you that things are actually getting better in Nigeria, in, in respect of the present economic hardship. Thank you so much on that. So, so I have a question for you. So regarding public affairs, what should the government be looking at when it's maintaining high standard of security? 
when the government is uh, maintaining our, uh, you know, it's you know one of the best way, you know, to fight insecurity is to put security measure in place. And security is both conventional and unconventional. You know, it is good to budget for uh, uh, ammunition and wealth, military wealth. But sometimes the best way to fight econ uh, to fight insecurity is to ensure that the economy of the country is favorable. And that's why I would like to appreciate the 2024 budget. This 2024 budget, you will appreciate that there is little budget that goes into capital infrastructure because this government budget, this renewed budget, appreciable amounts of the percentage of this budget goes into cushioning the effect of economic hardship. Human capital development tops the priority of this budget and also economic uh, improvement. So I want to believe that this government is starting well and I hope they, 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 they sustain on it because um, one of the best ways, what the government should look at is that it's not about employing people to prosecute war against insecurity. It's about the best way to secure a country is to ensure that the stomach is secured, stomach infrastructure. Let there be food on the people's, people. Most people that are still, most people uh, participate in crime is because of hunger. And when the government is trying to cushion the effect of hunger, economic hardship and the rest of them, you can see, you can appreciate the president just uh, recently, they are working seriously on ensuring that there is what? Uh, improvement in our electricity with the new uh, law, with the new agreement they signed with uh, UAE to provide 12,000 megawatts of electricity. It, you know, all these things will go a long way in ensuring that every Nigeria will have one thing they are doing and, uh, uh, and they are making money for what they are doing. Once somebody is gainfully employed or create an employment for himself and is busy doing something, you will find out that there will be decrease, wide decrease in this criminality and all that. So when we talk about this uh, fighting insecurity, is about ensuring that most young people have one thing or the other, they are doing to bring food on their table. And that is what the 2024 budget represents. Thank you so Thank you much for much. that, Honorable. Um, I have other questions to, you know, to ask you, but we have to run out of time and we would like to, you know, move on to the other segment of the show. Thank you so much for your time once again. Um, we pray and we hope that Nigeria is great and, of course, the insecurity in the, in the country um, becomes so minimal that we all can move about peacefully and with confidence. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you very much, sir. It's our pleasure. Thank you for having me. We'll go on a short break and we'll be back with Daybreak Africa to stay with us. <laughs> 